I'm Liz Schrum for the Wisconsin Technology Council, here with Wisbusiness.com, the show. Brought to you by Grant Thornton, White Hirschbeck Dudek, Madison Gas and Electric, and the University of Wisconsin at Milwaukee. On today's show, Tom Still, in his commentary, talks about the power of Google and a Wisconsin angle on that story. And Ralph Cowton, CEO of Quintessence Biosciences, talks about his company's efforts to cure certain types of cancer. I'll be right back with the Wisbusiness.com stock report. When someone you count on anticipates your needs, your job becomes a whole lot easier. Grant Thornton clients get advice and recommendations from partners in the U.S. and through member firms worldwide. Grant Thornton. Rising in the Wispbusiness.com stock report. Banks. Green Bay's Associated Bank Corp. has repaid its remaining $260 million TARP debt to the federal treasury. In addition, the Treasury Department announced that four other community banks in Wisconsin received more than $50 million as part of the Small Business Lending Fund. The fund encourages community banks to increase their lending to small businesses. And falling, jobs. The latest monthly report from the State Labor Department isn't good for the unemployment picture. The Department of Workforce Development says the state lost 2,300 jobs in August, and the unemployment rate rose one-tenth of a percentage point to 7.9%. Those job losses included 800 in the private sector. DWD maintains the state is on what it calls a positive path despite the national economic malaise. That's the wispbusiness.com stock report. Go to wispbusiness.com for more on these and other stories. And now, here's Tom Still with his Inside Wisconsin commentary. Google has acquired 103 companies in roughly 10 years, including three this month alone. Does that make Google a menacing threat to consumers or a wildly successful company that knows innovation when it sees it? That question came into sharper focus this month when a U.S. Senate subcommittee examined complaints that Google is abusing its dominant position in online search. With a market cap of $176 billion, give or take a billion bucks depending on the day, Google is one of the nation's largest companies. But that makes it an unsympathetic corporate icon in the minds of some, especially those who believe size and smarts can quickly morph into monopoly. A Capitol Hill hearing chaired by Wisconsin Senator Herb Cole took testimony recently on whether Google is rigging results and crowding other online search firms out of the market, or merely providing what customers want. Some Google critics claim it is skewing search results. They point to search algorithms they believe put Google's own consumer products or its advertising customers at the top of the list. The Federal Trade Commission apparently thinks enough of that claim that has decided to look into it. Over time, Google's mantra has been providing comprehensive search results as quickly as possible. That's a goal it strives to achieve through near constant revisions to the software that drives its search engines. Sometimes those tweaks have led to complaints from companies that found they dropped off the top of the page and even well down the list of pages. Other times, companies have complained about dramatically higher advertising prices. For antitrust laws to apply, however, critics must demonstrate that consumers are being hurt. That may be hard to do in a world where a competitive choice is a mouse click away. This month's hearing also took a look at Google's acquisition of companies such as Motorola Mobility, which sold for a reported $12.5 billion this summer. Are such acquisitions necessarily detrimental to consumers if they speed new products and services into the marketplace? One of two search boxes on Google's distinctively simple homepage reads, I'm feeling lucky. As the feds continue to look into Google's search practices, its executives will rely a lot less on luck than laying out their case that big isn't necessarily bad. Thanks, Tom. I'll be right back with Ralph Cowton of Quintessence Biosciences, a Madison firm developing a cancer-fighting drug. White Hirschbeck Dudek represents companies at all stages of development and in a wide range of industries to navigate the legal challenges of regional, national, and global growth. At WHD, every stage takes center stage. I'm back with Ralph Cowton, a serial entrepreneur and founder of Quintessence Biosciences. Thanks for joining us, Ralph. It's good to see you again, Liz. What are the therapeutic targets of Quintessence Biosciences? Well, what we have uh, is a technology that has allowed us to take a protein found in the human body. It's a protein made in our pancreas and the only known utility is uh, for the digestion of food. Uh, we've been able to take that protein, modify it, modify it slightly, and turn it into something that is toxic, toxic to cancer cells. 
our products have shown broad efficacy against quite a large number of cancers, uh, including uh, prostate cancer, pancreatic cancer, breast cancer, uh, colon cancer, ovarian cancer. Um, and what is, we think is gonna be remarkable about it is that because it is 95% identical to something already inside our body, it's gonna be very well tolerated. And so our goal is to really replace all the harsh chemotherapies with something that's broadly effective but very well tolerated by the human body. And what are your most promising leads and where do they stand in clinical trials and regulatory review? We have enrolled and treated uh, 36 patients so far. Uh, it, uh, the, the clinical trial is a uh, rising dose study, meaning that the first patients in receive a very small dose. Assuming we don't see uh, side effects caused by our drug, we enroll a new cohort of patients to treat them at a higher dose. The principal goal of the clinical trial is to uh, help identify the proper dose level. Uh, the general thinking is the larger the dose, the more likely to be effective broadly for a broad base of patients. Uh, we still haven't reached that, that toxic dose yet. We haven't, we haven't uh, so we're continuing to enroll patients and we're treating them with larger and larger doses. What is your quick appraisal of the strengths and challenges facing Wisconsin's biotech sector? You know, ha having been um, involved in the Wisconsin biotech sector for over 30 years, uh, my perspective is that there, uh, there, what comes to mind quickly is two major, major assets uh, and one very significant liability. Uh, the, the major assets that come to mind are one, the kinds of technology and discovery that's occurring here in Wisconsin. Uh, this is occurring mostly at, at uh, the major research institutions inside the state. Uh, and, and accompanying that is a true interest in trying to transfer that, those discoveries and those technologies to, uh, to the private sector to, uh, uh, to uh, allow for the translation of science into products and technologies. There's a true interest and a strong support for that in the uh, state's institutions. Uh, the second major asset that comes to mind is uh, the workforce. We have a very talented uh, workforce. Again, one has to look to the educational institutions in the state, uh, the uh, universities, the tech colleges, uh, who are training these young people uh, to step into the role of, of providing uh, services and so we, so we just have a, an, an excellent workforce. The major liability, and it's a significant one, is the lack of capital, uh, and lack of venture capital in the state. Thanks, Ralph, and thank you for watching this edition of WISBusiness.com, the show. The show is produced by WISBusiness.com and the Wisconsin Technology Council and sponsored by Grant Thornton, White Hirschbeck Dudek, MGE, and UW Milwaukee. Visit our websites to read and learn more. I'm Liz Schrum of Talentfoot Executive Search. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.